Hello and welcome to another episode of Project Supercar, the channel where I've built my own supercar using an old Audi that I paid only £300 for. And behind me is the prototype. Now this is part two, so following on from part one, where we actually removed the dashboard from the prototype so we could take a closer look at it. And that's what we're going to do in this episode. Here we have two dashboards from two different styles of Audi A6. Now before we take a closer look on these, where were we in the last episode? Oh that's right, in modern manufacturing processes the dashboard is now positioned in place on the production line using a crane. I think it's time that we take a look at this dashboard and we compare it to the new dashboard that I removed from the new donor car, which is, if you've been following along, an Audi A6 2.7 twin turbo. Now, the layout is very similar, but this dashboard from the Audi A6 C4 is much more chunky. You've got all this lower part here, which is removable on the Audi A6 C5 dashboard. Both dashboards are approximately the same length. You're looking at just over, say, 142 centimetres or so. I'm hoping this highlights the transition between a more modern um, dashboard from an older one. This one has a lot more bulk in it because it essentially bolts to the bulk head. Whereas the upper dashboard, the one from the Audi A6 C5, this dashboard actually bolts to a steel frame, which is then bolted to the dashboard. On this one, the aircon unit or heater matrix unit is half inside the cabin and half outside the cabin, and it would be in the engine bay. But on this dashboard, all of the heater matrix and air conditioning unit 
is on the inside of the cabin and none of it is inside the engine compartment. Now we'll go into that in more details in future episodes but hopefully if, uh, if I just get out of the way a little bit you can see the differences in the dashboards. What we have here are the clocks and the heater controls for both the Audi A6 C5 and the Audi A6 C4. We'll just take a closer look at the C4 ones first. So these are the clocks from the Audi A6 C4 and this is the heater controls. Like I say, these are free with the donor car and also the Speedo is calibrated to the gearbox and the rev counter will also match the ECU. Now these clocks might look a little bit boring so I did manage to get some different ones. These are from I believe it was an S6 so these look much better and you've got some added clocks which is the battery, oil and the time. These are the clocks from the Audi 2.7T and they should match the engine and the ECU no problem. Now the thing with these clocks is they actually share quite a few bits and pieces with Lamborghini because if you're into cars then you'll probably know that Audi and Lamborghini do share a lot of the parts. And here we have the heater and air conditioning control unit. Again, this is free, it comes from the donor car, so we might as well use it. These analog clocks are designed to work with the gearbox, engine and ECU of your donor car. Now more modern cars appear to be going towards the digital dashboard or the screen. So they're doing away with clocks and they're replacing it with basically a touchpad, you know, an iPad or iPhone type thing. Now they look cool today because you can configure them and it's all nice with these gizmos and whatnot. But I'm going to call it, I reckon in the next five to seven years, these digital dashes, these screens are going to look outdated. Now don't get me wrong, I think all family cars and low-end cars are going to have screens. It's just cheaper. But I think what we might see in the future is executive and exotic sports cars, supercars, those sort of things, making a move back to analog clocks. Now if you're spending a lot of money on an exotic supercar, what would you rather look at? A bejeweled Rolex? or a 199 Casio watch. So yeah, I think for now, screens are the in thing and they look cool and trendy. In five to seven years time, I think they're gonna be old school, especially on supercars and things like Rolls Royces and Mercedes. I think they're gonna go back to quality analog clocks. So there's a whole load of free stuff that you get with your donor car. So you might as well try and use it if you want to save a few quid. Now I do want to um, dress up the dashboard a little bit on this one. One of the things I want to do is obviously the turbo build will be a twin turbo. And on this dashboard there aren't any boost gauges. Now what's the fun of having turbos if you don't have some boost gauges? So I might have to modify the top part of this dash a little bit and get a couple of gauges put in somewhere around here so it matches this sort of layout because I do prefer this layout to this one although this one is a lot lighter. So there's no turbo boost gauge. Hmm. I prefer the look of this set of clocks anyway. I think it might look quite cool if one of these was a boost gauge, but we'll see. If there's uh, money in the budget, then I will modify the Audi A6 
2.7T uh, dashboard and add in some extra gauges if there's money in the budget. And I might do that after the IVA test, I think. Because obviously one of the good things about fitting an OEM dash is it's type approved. So you should have no problem with it passing an IVA. And we all know that those uh, bureaucrats keep changing the rules. So even if you try and build a car that follows all the rules and regulations, they change them. And like some of you pointed out from my previous um, episode regarding airbags, and you're right, if you're building a kit car, you can't fit an airbag. So thanks for everyone who pointed that out. In fact, that's what I like. If there's anyone out there and you want to point things out and you've got some technical information, because that's really what I really need. You know, if you point me in the right direction and then quote regulations or quote a website or something like that, that's fantastic. So more of that, that's great. But yes, yeah, so these uh, bureaucrats, they keep changing the rules and the regulations. So, if you fit a dashboard from an OEM car, you should be good. And I think that'll do for now. Um, I've got dashboards everywhere, nuts and bolts everywhere, and I'm going to have a tidy up. And I think in the next episode, we'll have to take a closer look at a bulkhead, and we'll start looking at pedals and aircon units and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, so I think that'll do for now, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye for now.